Okay, Obi Wan Kenobi Part Two or Obi Wan Kenobi Episode Two? I don't know. <laughs> So this episode here folks is on Obi-Wan where he's travelled to the planet Deu I think. Uh, it picks up just after the previous episode ended and he's now looking for Princess Leia. So he's walking around the planet, well the city, and he's trying to you know, gather information, take everything in. He doesn't know where to start, where to go. Uh, he's trying to find as many leads as he can. So he's just observing as he always does. But he's not observing like this stroke in the beard the way he would have done the prequels. And he actually reaches out to Qui-Gon. Jin, played by Liam Neeson in the prequels, and says, Master, I could give some guidance right now, something like that there. Um, <coughs> so he bumps into a couple of people and tries to ask them, you know, where could he find his daughter, is in Princess Leia, because he can't get away, he can't give away her identity, um, because it's too dangerous for her and for him. Fun fact, um, there's a homeless veteran stormtrooper, and he's literally asking Kenobi for credits for a warm meal. And uh, I, I didn't recognise my first, but I kind of felt in the back of my head, I should know this character, there's a reason they're showing this, this isn't, this isn't random. Lo and behold, it's the guy that played Django Fett and Boba Fett <laughs> in, in the prequels, and the book of Boba Fett, the same actor doing a cameo. Um, and he doesn't seem to recognise Kenobi when Kenobi gives him some credits. It just shows that Kenobi has a heart, even though the guy's father like tried to kill him and all that. So, um, Kenobi... Uh, after asking around a few people, gets he learns that there's a another Jedi who like helps to smuggle the citizens that are trapped there off the planet. And whenever we, we see him in his own place, he has this woman and her child, and they basically um, they sit down and he uses the force to close all the windows and all. And he has like a, a radio, there's like a pen though or a dildo, and he's able to uh, use a Jedi mind trick. To uh, convince the uh, the guards to let the woman and child pass and reach their destination, and he tells them that he's using a Jedi mind trick and gets the other person to repeat what he's saying. And uh, oh, while this is happening, Kenobi is like in the corner observing the guy, and he just he knows that there's something off about the character. There's something's not right here. Um, whenever he's he, he takes the credits for, uh, from the the woman, and then he lets them go on to escape. Kenobi comes over to him and has a brief interaction with him <laughs> and it's clear that you know during the observation of the conversation he had with the woman Kenobi picked up the guy's not a real Jedi well I don't think he is but uh, he was basically using remotes and magnets to be able to close the windows and all and <clears throat> to levitate objects and so he calls him out the shit and the guy doesn't realise that he's actually talking to a real Jedi and Kenobi threatens to expose him unless he tells him how he can find Princess Leia. The guy says it'll be like 500 credits to locate her and another for 300 credits to um, for him to take Kenobi to her. And he even goes to give you a thousand credits if uh, you want to learn a few tricks. <laughs> As if Kenobi didn't know all the tricks. Um, so uh, Kenobi manages to find out where, roughly where she is. And he puts on a disguise and sneaks in to this uh, like, kind of like a prison. And... He finds the cell that uh, she was in, and it turns out the reason Princess Leia was kidnapped was not to bring her back to Darth Vader, it was to bring Kenobi out into the open. It was a, a trap. It's a trap. And uh, it turns out it was set up by the female Inquisitor that really has it out for Kenobi. And so the guards uh, try to take him down, and Kenobi, you know, whips their friggin' asses as he always does and escapes. Then he, he does find her. And at this point, the Inquisitors find out that he's on the planet. And what they do is they pull like a mugshot photo of him from Revenge of the Sith. And they send it to all of the citizens, stormtroopers and guards on that planet to look for Kenobi. And they can see what he looks like, uh, you know, find him, kill him. He's, you know, he's a Jedi, he's a danger. And while well, everybody's going to look for him, Princess Leia... She, this is the first time she's properly met Kenobi herself, even though Kenobi had his baby, like she doesn't remember him, doesn't know who he is, doesn't know whether to trust him or not. And she feels like he's hiding something. She sees the lightsaber and figures that he's a Jedi, but whenever she sees that other people are now looking for Kenobi and his, his mugshot is showing up on their devices, 
She begins to believe that he's hiding something from her and doesn't believe him whenever he tells her that he knows Bail Organa, her like, stepfather. So she runs away from him, you know, understandable. And he has to play catch up with her. So it's kind of like watching, you know, playing the game of Tigger or something, whether he's running after her. And at this point, it gathers enough attention from the other people, you know, because he's chasing after her. You know, there's a guy in a robe and he's running, and funny enough, he looks like the guy that, you know, the stormtroopers and, and the inquisitors are looking for, you know. So, um, he chases her up on the, like, a rooftop, and she is about, she, she falls off, like, the roof. And Kenobi, at this point, for the first time, uses the force, God knows how long, to break her fall. Because as she was uh, falling, uh, he just reaches over and after a moment he's able to grasp her, you know, hold her, so that she has her blow to the ground cushioned, you know, she just doesn't smack her head and get killed. And then at this point the guy that was pretending to be a Jedi reaches out to Kenobi and is like, you know, I think he, he tells him like how, how to escape, um, how to, <clears throat> sorry I've got a freaking cold here, my voice is up and down. He basically provides Kenobi with an escape plan and uh, he tries to make amends, you know, for what he did because he feels bad. And I think, you know, by seeing Kenobi out in the boat has gave him hope that, you know, something could be done about um, the, the Emperor and the Sith. So, um, he, that guy, Hadja, yeah, he runs out and he tries to distract the Inquisitors, but the Inquisitor is able to use their own Jedi, their own Force Mind tricks, and uh, even though he refused to break, he refused to tell her where Kenobi and Princess Leia was, she's able to use the Force and find out um, from his own memory where uh, Kenobi and Princess Leia are, and then <coughs> runs off she goes. So uh, Kenobi has reached this like you know like shipyard or something, this warehouse, and the Inquisitor has found out where he is, and just basically just you know taunting him and trying to kill him, and he's freaking terrified. You know that that's just there. Uh, I think he's just afraid to use the Force and you know do what it takes to become a Jedi Knight again. Like he shouldn't be afraid of everybody is. I think he's, he's just afraid of being exposed and putting himself in Princess Leia and putting himself in Princess Leia in danger. So um. The, the other High Inquisitor comes down and has a go at the female Inquisitor because he's pissed off with her, wasting their time going after Kenobi. And even though like she, her plan worked to lure Kenobi out and they've got him, um, he, he, he doesn't like the fact that she disobeyed his orders and she's just like, you know, screw you and just kills him with a lightsaber. And before Kenobi is able to jump onto a ship and escape with Princess Leia, uh, the female Inquisitor shouts something at him that greatly disturbs him. She tells him that Anakin Skywalker is alive. And this is new, this is new, this is cool, this is really interesting. Um, you know, because by A New Hope, it was led to believe... Uh, I mean, I, I got the impression that Kenobi knew all along Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, was alive, that he survived Revenge of the Sith. Because he basically, you know, he left him for dead, but I thought he would have realised that the Emperor would have found him. But no, it turns out he didn't. Uh, he, for the last 10 years, he believed Darth Vader was dead and it was just the Emperor. And those words that uh, Anakin Skywalker is alive and looking for him have haunted him. It were to the point where Princess Leia is able to register that something's off about him. I like this episode more than the first episode. Not that the first episode was bad, but this episode gave us more clarity. It was more realistic. Uh, it, it's given us, you know, proper character development to see where Kenobi's head is at and how he handles situations and how different he is. You know, this is a <clears throat> former Jedi Master who's blending in as an ordinary citizen and doesn't want to be noticed. You know, he's past himself with everybody and there's things that he's letting slide that he wouldn't have let slide before but now he's just, you know, under the radar. He's trying to live under the radar because he doesn't want to risk his own life or Princess Leia's life. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, the last shot of episode two, or part two, you want to call it, is of Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader inside the like water tank. I think it's like one of those healing tanks. It's, it's a very similar tank to what Boba Fett was in in the book of Boba Fett, where I think it's meant to like heal all your wounds and all, or it provides temporary pain relief. Because Anakin Skywalker, after being burned alive on Mustafar, or Mustafar, uh, he would be in chronic pain twenty four seven. So uh, that their tank that you see him in the original trilogy and the tank that you see him in um, <coughs> friggin' uh, Kenobi series, I think it's just their 
not just to heal the wounds, but to try and provide him relief. Because that kind of chronic pain would just drive you mad. It really would. You know, feeling that all the time. Like, you're, uh, like his old friggin' lungs and everything, the organs would have burned out. You know, all the way to kingdom come, near enough. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see where the character of Hadja, where this leads to. They'll probably end up killing them off. I'd say this female in Quester, she's going to be a huge problem. And I'd either Darth Vader will kill her, or Kenobi will kill her, or she'll get herself killed. Or maybe she'll, like, you know, she might be one of the wee girls that was showed at the start of the uh, first episode on the, the, the uh, Jedi Temple in Corsican. And she might, you know, change her ways and become good. But nah, she's she's brainwashed into believing that the Jedi are evil. From her point of view, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> I look forward to episode 3 and seeing where this goes. It'd be so cool if they brought Darth Maul into the series. I don't think they'll do that. I'm not even sure there's going to be a second series or not. As far as I know, they're, they're, they're going to make two series. I'm kind of glad. Like, I was hoping they would make this into a film, like a trilogy. But you know what? I'm actually glad that they've made it into a series. Because it, it means that we're getting more content as a series as opposed to what we would have got had it been a film. You know, it's great. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the Kenobi series. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot better than what I thought it would be. And it, it, I feel like it's starting, Disney's starting to make up, you know, for that god awful sequel trilogy that they gave us. You know, I think they've found the right footing now and they know what the fans want. And they're finally starting to give it to us. You know, and Deborah Chow. I think it's Deborah Chow, she's like wrote and directed the first two episodes so far and she's done a good job, you know, definitely has captured, you know, Kenobi. It feels more realistic, which is what the prequels kind of lacked, you know, it's more fantasy. Even though there is fantasy in this show, but they're they're playing it out as if, it, if this was real life near enough. There's more realism to it and it adds more depth to the character, you know, and nothing's forced, you know, it, it just runs its course naturally, as I said before. It's great, I have no real complaints about it.